I've got a surprise in my bag. Do you want to see it? Transfers. Now these are one of the nice little finishing touches you can put on your models. They make them look more professionally done if you don't want a freehand detail. These are a great option. However, they're very fiddly and a bit annoying for beginners to learn how to do. I am not tutorialing these. I am showing you a great alternative product. One that is not meant for miniatures. However, they're transfers of sorts. I have bought some nail decals. These are for nail art. Not really meant for miniatures, but would they work on miniatures? Let's find out. Ah, the classic Games Workshop miniature sheets. Loaded with decals for very specific houses. Preordained choices that have been made for you. Don't get me wrong, some of these house specific ones are very lovely. They're very detailed and lovely bright colours. You've got the more generic imperial ones, and then at the bottom of the sheet, you've got the numbers and general machinery type ones. The Chaos ones aren't much different. There's less choice for the houses on these. There's only a few little house things at the top here. And the rest is generic Chaos stars and little scrawly writing. Like these runes down here. I quite like the scribbly little writing that's about human size as if they've scrawled a little note on the machine. The War Dog sheet is much the same. Now, let's have a look in my little bag of secrets. Let's have a look at these nail decals. Remember to like this video if you've never thought of this before, and subscribe if you want to see more from this Chaos Knight series that I'm putting out, a video every Friday. It's leading up to a diorama. Why is this nice packaging? Boy stuff doesn't come in nice packaging. It gets sent in brown envelopes. Lovely little bird sticker on this, which is nice and thematic for my Vulture Boys. Carefully take that off. Now let's have a look what I've got in here. I've got the instruction cards and a nice little message from the store I ordered it from. I actually contacted Tara who runs Cake for Corvids on Etsy. She said I could promote her business in this video. I'm not getting paid for this obviously. And she also, by chance, paints miniatures herself. Nice, thank you Tara. This is what I have received. These are about just over three pounds each and I bought two just in case of whoopsies. They are lovely little decals sized for human nails obviously. So this makes them not as big as the biggest decals you can get from Games Workshop, but good for fiddly little things like Chaos Shields. You can see my Vulture Boys are going to love these vultures in the middle here. Little vultures with their skeletons visible and bird skulls. I think those are going to be the most thematic. There are lots of lovely choices on here. There's fish and there's giraffe skeletons. Tell me you don't want to do fish marines. Go on, do some fish marines. There's little ones there as well for maybe the war dogs they'd be useful for. So go and check out Tara's shop, Cake for Corvids on Etsy. There's mostly animals for choice on there, but if you're after anything else, there are lots of other sellers on Etsy as well. This is the boy we're gonna be doing. You may recognize him from the last two videos. I promise I'll catch the other ones up to this standard very soon. And we are picking what to put on this shield. What is gonna be his house logo? Obviously it's the vulture, isn't it? Perfect size. Yeah, go on then, let's have a bit of that. First I peel the film off, which it says not to do until you've cut them out, but I am trying to get as little of the surrounding glue as possible that's on these, because it's quite tacky all over and I don't want to leave much residue. Carefully scalping around, trying not to put my fingers over any designs that I would like to keep intact for the future of this project, and popping this little design off. Carefully trying not to stick to it too much and cutting all the corners off, I have now finally prepped this for use on the miniature. I started to line this up, then realised something. It needs to be the other way up. Because this isn't like the other transfers where you slide them off, so it needs to be face down. This means I'm kind of working blind a little bit. I trimmed it to what I thought would fit the chains quite well across this shield. I had a couple of spares, but once I trimmed it, I thought this one was quite good anyway. I prepared what I need, a glass of water to wet my brush, and some tissue to dry my brush if I needed it. I'm using a medium sized brush for this, I don't want to be drowning it and I don't want to be going too light with the water. Here's our little bird ready for the shield. So I put him where I wanted him 
and started to apply the water to the back as per the instructions. I then realized that I hadn't prepped the area. I was meant to put some art coat on there like you do with normal transfers to prep the area, but I didn't. It was too late now, it was already wet. I just had to press on and see if I'd ruined this on the first attempt. I applied pressure after it was damp enough, as the instructions suggested, and waited for about four minutes. After this was done, I got my scalpel in there and moment of truth, had I buggered this completely? Ooh, there's his little head. Perfect. Look at the detail on these decals. I can't believe I haven't seen this before. Surely someone out there knows about this. I can't be the first to discover it. But if I am the first to discover it, you're welcome everyone. I also can't believe I found such perfect transfers for my theme. Who'd have thought vulture nail transfers existed? Yeah, lovely. Right, what's next? I decided to press on with one of the bigger bird skulls, as I thought this would be nice on the top hatch of the machine itself. It fits nice on there. It's going across the white stripe, which I think will help it stand out. I didn't prep the surface area either, because it worked so well last time, but I was way too impatient. Same wetting and pressure technique, but I did not leave it long enough. When I went in with my scalpel, it started to peel up the design as well. So I flattened the design out very carefully with the tip of the scalpel, re-moistened it, and applied more pressure. I thought I'd try my luck again, being impatient. And I was rewarded for my impatience. It worked perfectly. Look at the detail you can get with these type of transfers. Both of them looking really fresh on this model. And I know no one else has a Warhammer model like mine. I cannot believe this has worked. This is amazing. This is revolutionary in my mind for the transfer game. Why have we never done this before? Now there are different types of nail transfer. I did my research. There are ones that are like stickers. You don't want them. There are other type of water slide ones which are more like Warhammer decals, but I found they weren't as nice and detailed as these ones, which are more like those temporary tattoos you got as a kid in box of candy sticks and other sweets and snacks. Cake for Corvids, Tara, the lady I got these from, has lovely products in there. They are mostly animals, so if you're looking for animal themed transfers for your Warhammer miniatures, that's the way to go. There are a bunch of nautical ones, there are a bunch of jungle ones, go and have a look. If you're looking for other ones, have a look at the rest of Etsy. There are loads of, you know, bats, Ouija board stuff. If you're doing a vampire count army, oh, chef's kiss. These will be perfect for all your banners, for like armor shoulders, shields. Have a look, loads of bats, cats, moons, skulls, all that kind of spooky stuff. It's worth looking if you're looking for army ideas. If you want to do space marines, but don't want to do a normal chapter, if you're, Bleh. If you're looking to do your own chapter, like I'm doing my own House of Knights, have a look, see what you can find. This might bring a whole theme to mind in your head. I gave these a little blast with a hairdryer to make sure they were dry and set. I didn't want anything I was going to do next to affect these. I then primed the area as I should have with Ard Coat for these. I did this because I'm putting more transfers on. I am mixing these with the official Games Workshop Chaos transfers to make it look more coherent. I also used a little bit of decal fix from Vallejo just to prep the area and make sure these transfers went on as smooth as possible. This stuff goes on a little bit cloudy, but dries clear. So do not worry if, you, if you're thinking of trying this. I gathered all the other areas of the model I wanted to put actual chaos transfers on, including the shoulder pads and the shin guards of this chaos knight. On the shoulders and the shin pad panels, I covered the whole area with art coat. You don't want to cover just the little patch you're putting the transfer on as you may leave ridges of this gloss varnish. So make sure it goes all the way up to the edges so you have a nice consistent coat. And then I use decal fix on these as well. On the top door, I wanted to use one of these little scrawly chaos writing things to go next to the bird skull. I thought that would look quite nice on top here. It looked like someone had painted this by hand and then written a little message to the Dark Gods next to it. For the shoulder pads, I want to use these big white chaos stars, half on each. And the plan is to rough them up like the stripes. 
so they blend in nicely and look like it's one paint job, not very clean Chaos Star next to very dirty hazard stripes. And I also think I'm going to use some of these little Chaos runes on the shin guards, the black ones just over the orange and white hazard stripes to add a more industrial look, like they're some kind of symbols that mean some kind of industrial thing, rather than Chaos, because these are big JCBs basically in my lore. I set them up as I like to do with decals on a very damp bit of toilet paper. This allows the water to soak through evenly and doesn't drown them so they float off as you still want them on this backing to slide them off nicely. Water slide decals. You want to get the little bit of paper with the decal on it, put it next to where you want it, make sure that area is nice and wet, not overflowing but damp, and get your wet brush and put it on top of the decal and slide it off. This is a ball lake with chaos stars because they're all spindly and they've got these bits that kind of go like this when you're trying to slide them off with little things like marine shoulder pads. That's way easier than trying to lift it off the decal paper and place it where you want it because you can get the decal paper right up next to where you want to put it and just slide it over. While I fart around and apply all these decals, it's time for lizard lore, baby! Now we've heard the tale of the Vulture's gang stealing these Imperial Knights from an unsuspecting bunker. We've heard about the formation of House Wrecked, the house they formed back on their jungle homeworld. We've heard how they now wage war in search for scrap. And so had the Chaos Gods. They started to take an interest in these stupid little scrappers with their big machines. The carnage they were causing the Imperium's nearby planets was funny. They liked to watch the Imperium suffer after fighting them for millennia. The Chaos Gods started to choose favourites among them, one of them being this knight. They started to bestow gifts to their favourites, empowering them even more and causing more carnage for nearby Imperial worlds. Slanesh blessed the Rampager with speed, and as it tore through the front line of Imperial forces at every battle, she smiled at its progress. Zinch blessed the Knight Tyrant with mystical powers. It now stalks the warp and pops out, surprising the enemies when they least expect it. This blind knight now sees through its third eye. Korn blessed this despoiler that we see here in this video for the amount of blood it has shed with its massive chainsaw and huge cannon. Grandfather Nurgle looked fondly on the little war dogs. They reminded him of his Nurglings running around the battlefield, spreading mayhem and mischief. The house, now even more empowered, stood as a bigger threat to the Imperium than ever before. Through entertaining the Chaos Gods with their mayhem, this band of stupid little scrappers had now advanced to be Chaos Warlords. This has tied them in so well. The little Chaos Scrawlies on top look absolutely beautiful with this skull. These chaos symbols on the shield kind of give it some kind of rank marking, I feel. Tell me what you think it looks like. Leave a comment below. Next, I sealed it all with some Lamia Medium. This is to get rid of that shine from the hard coat that we've put underneath to prep the area and also to protect them. This is medium, but it does work as kind of a satin varnish. It will bring the levels down of all these gloss areas to the rest of the GW paints that are next to them. I again covered the whole area that I covered with gloss varnish to avoid any little ridges of medium or varnish on the area to keep it nice and smooth. I now needed to work on these chaos stars. They were too clean next to this dirty, dirty hazard stripe. For this, I brought back in Wraith Bone, which was the original off-white colour that I used for this chipping effect with the sponging. I used a brush to just dab around the middle areas of the white chaos star, giving it nice depth and dirt. This started to dirty it up and I knew I was on the right path to make this look like one cohesive paint job. I even frayed the edges a little bit just to make it look like it had been battered. Rinse and repeat on the other side and let's get going with the next step. I brought back in the oranges that I'd done the sponging with on the top of the shoulder pads and started to chip the edges again. Just little brush marks using straight from the pot. I didn't mind building up a little bit of texture with thick paint and just rubbing it smooth and spreading it out and making it look faded. The texture kind of adds to this weathered look anyway. And again, rinse and repeat on the other shoulder pad. With this orange going on nicely and adding to the weathered effect, I then brought in the very light orange we'd used on the last one as well. But if you want to see how I did this orange paint job and the chipping effect on these hazard stripes and how they're so nice and neat, I'll link that video in the top corner now if you want to go and watch that. 
and there we go. I feel like I've done enough on that. Less is more, maybe good. I don't want to completely ruin this Chaos Star. Right, on to the grand reveal. Before we have a look at where we're at now with this, remember to subscribe. I'm putting this out around my full-time job, my childcare commitments, and everything else in my life. I'm trying to get this going, getting very close to a thousand subscribers now. Hopefully we'll hit 900 in the next week. The next video is weathering. I've talked to a couple of people in the comments and they're looking forward to weathering. So I hope you all enjoy that. Like I said, be a pal, like and subscribe, leave me a little comment. How are you today? Let me know. And enjoy the reveal shots. It's not a pile of shame. It's a pile of future fun.